Hey guys, got a new weapons mounted light from Claris. This is their GL4. And as you can see here, it's 3300 lumens with a 370 meter throw. So I figured we'd kind of do a quick unboxing, kind of go over all the specs. Um, we'll get it mounted on something and we'll see how it performs. Uh, it's got type C charging, one and a half meter impact resistance. It's IPX8 waterproof. Uh, you can scan that QR code if you want to go to their website. Uh, looks like it's remote switch capable. I'm not sure if that's in it. We'll find out. It's got a tactical rail clamp and it looks like there's an M lock uh, capable. Again, I'm not sure if it's included or not. So we'll see what all is in here. So there is our type C cable. That is our remote pressure switch. There is our clamp, and that is just a Picatinny. Uh, there's a couple different options, it looks like, for mounting that. I can see that it slides into there, so, um, but not an M-lock, just a Picatinny. The light itself, and obviously we'll go over this in great detail. Um, looks like extra o-ring, uh, a couple of screws to figure out what those are for, an allen key, some instructions or manual, and there should be a battery in here. Take that little cover off the battery. And the battery is a 5,000 milliamp hour. And it appears to be a 21700 battery. Um, and it's got like a little protective thing around the end there. So this might be proprietary that you have to use one of their batteries for it. I'm not sure I'll try something else in it and see if it works. So the very first thing we'll do is get that battery fully charged up. There's a USB cover port right there. So it's got a little bit of a tab on it and you just kind of pull up on that. And then usually you can rotate these out of the way and then we'll get that plugged in. See if there's any lights. Yeah, there's a red light right there. And we'll see if uh, it changes color whenever it's charged. While the light's charging, I'll show you some more of the specs there in case I do forget anything. Um, kind of important is the candela so on high which is probably the mode that it will stay in it's around 10,000 candela up on turbo it's over 34,000 uh, so very impressive numbers on this and it does turn green when it's finished charging all right we're all charged up here so Claris, I've done several reviews for them on other pistol mounted lights, on handheld lights, on uh, headlamps. Uh, they make some of the best flashlights in the world. Uh, their quality is always the very best. I've never had an issue with any of their stuff at all. Um, so just some quick specs on this. Uh, it's five and a half inches in length. If you go from the widest part right here where the mount is down to here, it's 1.8 inches. Um, around the head where these little nubs are is around 1.5 inches. Um, the body I think is right around an inch and it weighs just over five ounces without the battery. So this was designed to be a weapons mounted flashlight, uh, but you can quickly detach it and use it as a handheld. I mean, like less than a second, it comes off of that mount. And I'll show that here later. Um, as a handheld, it's a little bit slippery. Uh, the anodization is really, really, really smooth. Um, but again, you would have this to hold on to and like it's not gonna move once you get your hand and stuff on that, but it is a little bit slippery. Um, and they kind of elected not to put a, a whole lot of like heat sinking into the head. Um, and I'll test it out here in turbo in a little bit, uh, but I got a feeling like it's probably not gonna last more than like probably 30 seconds to a minute uh, just because it's gonna get so hot and it does have uh, like temperature regulation. 
Claris is usually pretty similarly priced to like an Olight. Um, and I think this is gonna come in like the $120, $130 range. So it does have a crenulated bezel. It's not real aggressive, but I mean, there is a little bit of a strike bezel there. They put the model name on the opposite side here, the GL4. And I gotta admit, I don't really like how that looks. Um, it kind of looks a little bit cheap to me, but that's just my opinion on it. I like this side here. I think that looks pretty good. I like their, they always have like that unique font and stuff on, on their lettering, but that side, I don't know. It just kind of looks a little out of place for the rest of the light to me. And that piece looks like it could be removable. There's two set screws right there. If you chose not to mount it to a weapon, I mean, I would just buy a regular flashlight if you weren't using it as that, but it looks like it could be removed. Uh, these two holes here, I'm actually not really sure what they're for. They're threaded. Um, and there are a couple extra screws right there, but there would be no purpose in putting screws in those. So I really don't know what that's for. So this light can have two different settings. You can have tactical setting and outdoor setting. Um, it ships in the tactical setting. And what that means is that when you push the main button here, it goes into turbo immediately. And then when you push the little side mode switch here, it goes into strobe. So you have turbo and strobe. Um, and then you can also change the outputs and stuff like that, which we'll go over that in a second. But that's, and then in the outdoor setting, basically it'll have mode memory. So if you wanted to start off in medium, it will. And then this button here is always low. So those are the difference between tactical and outdoor. The main switch can be momentary or constant. And I'll go ahead and show this to you guys. This is gonna come on in the turbo setting and it just takes just the lightest little touch on this. And I mean, you can just see that basically my entire hand just disappears wherever that thing is. Like it is intense bright. That is the uh, 3300 lumens that comes on there. And then here's gonna be a strobe warning. Um, so basically you just take this right here and it is a constant rate strobe. Um, if you just want momentary on the strobe, again, another warning, you just tap it and let up, tap it, let up. Um, but you can also have it to where it will stay on. You just hold it for more than two seconds and then the strobe stays on for you and you just tap to shut it off. And then let's say you don't need that turbo setting. So you can turn this on by the main switch and then the mode switch will dim that down all the way down to a really fairly low light and then back up to there. But again, if you shut it off and then you turn it back on, it always comes on in that turbo mode. So I'll show you here that we'll go down to like a really low setting. All right, we'll shut it off. And when we turn it back on, it comes back on on that turbo. To switch between tactical and outdoor, you basically just press the one button down for a few seconds, basically like five seconds or so. And then while you're still pressing it, you press the other button and then it should be switched around now. And so now when we press this button, we can change uh, to the different types of settings. So this is not the turbo now. You can see obviously it's getting brighter. If I wanna have that right there be my output every single time I turn it on and off, that's what it'll be now. Just that low setting. So it does not do the turbo. And then this button here would also be a low. And so if, if I change this, let's go to like a somewhere in the middle here, this is still gonna be that low setting. So every time I push that, I get a low. Show you guys this little LED indicator, which was I showed with charging earlier, but it also is a battery level indicator. So when you first turn this on every single time, that will come on. And if it's green, it means it's between 70 to 100% charged. Um, if it would be orange, it's between 30 and 70%. And if it comes on and that would be red, you're below 30%, you probably need to recharge the light. But Look at that thing, that thing is insanely bright. So 
before I mount this onto a rifle, I wanted to show you guys this. Um, basically once, so we'll undo these two screws here, put it on a rail, um, and then once it's mounted, this stays on, and then you can put this on and off as you want. And this thing right here, as you turn it, that's what actually catches on this right here and locks it in place. Um, and then it's also down here, you can see the same button that I turned there. I can turn that and lock that in place. So you can mount this. So imagine this is on the side of my rifle. I can mount it either like this or underneath like this. Uh, it allows for either way. And as I mentioned earlier, they do make an M lock version of this. Um, the only difference is like, it'll just get it maybe just that much closer to your rail. Um, I just threw a little Picatinny section on my rail here to mount this. I wanted to point out that the Allen key that they included is Allen on the one end, but it's like Phillips on the other end. And I don't see anything on the light anywhere or the extra screws or anywhere that has Phillips heads. All of these are Allen heads. And so by having the Phillips on the one end, when you're trying to tighten this down, you obviously can't use that. And so you got to do just like partial turns this way. So it, it's time consuming getting this mounted on here. I know I said this was time consuming, but in reality, it only took like a minute or something like that. And if you were doing like the majority of flashlight mounts have like the four screws that actually hold the light in, that would take significantly longer than the two screws that um, hold this on. I was really just complaining about that Phillips head on there. I just wish that was just an Allen like the other end is. So once you have that mounted on there, like inserting the light is super, super easy. You basically just line that up until it clicks in place. And then that is rock solid. That will not go anywhere at all. And then if you wanna release the flashlight to use it as a handheld or whatever, you basically just turn this little button and the thing just slides out then. So pretty quick. And then, like I said before too, you can mount it uh, underneath as well. Just push it in. Uh, there's not a huge difference between the side mount and the bottom mount. Um, but if you'd rather run it that way, you can. So let's switch over to the remote pressure switch. Um, I'm pretty sure with it, you only get the turbo of the flashlight. So it would be the full 3300 lumens. So there's two buttons on here. You got like a main one and then like a side one here. Uh, so let's see here. Yes, that is definitely the, the turbo. And that's basically, so if you want like constant on and back off, and then this here is for momentary. So you just, yeah, if, if you just tap it, it just momentarily comes on and off. You can't leave it on, but this one here stays on. So let's get this mounted up to the rifle and see what that looks like. So that pressure switch literally just snaps over top of that, that rail there. Um, so it still gives your hand a nice spot. Um, I usually will put the momentary forward and then come back for the constant. But pretty slick little setup. So one thing I did notice is that if you want to mount it to the side, like I have it right here, it makes getting to that charging port almost impossible you basically have to remove the light, which again, only takes a second, but it would be nice if that were not quite right where it is. So you can see if you have it mounted underneath that you can easily get to the charging port there. All right, I'm gonna get you guys some nighttime photos and then we will come back and wrap this video up. So hopefully those nighttime shots gave you some idea of its performance. It got an unbelievably awesome throw to it. It's got a nice spill to it. 
Uh, the hot spot on it is incredible. Overall, it's a really good performing light. So if you look at some of the weapons mounted lights from like Surefire, Mod Light, um, even Streamlight, but for sure Surefire, Mod Light, they're, they're in like the $300, $400 range. Um, Streamlight, I think is maybe like in the $150 to $200 range. Um, a lot of the O lights are in the 120 to 150 range, something like that. That's basically where this Claris comes in at. It comes in at 120 um, with everything that I showed, the remote switch and uh, the extra stuff, the charging cable, all that type of stuff. But it does not include an M-lock section. And again, it doesn't really stick out, you know, hardly much at all, um, even with the rail section there. So as long as you have any type of rail, it'll, it'll fit on that. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Claris GL4. Um, if you guys are looking for something that's maybe in the price range of the O-lights and the Streamlights, um, but with better performance, uh, give Claris a look. Um, I'll leave a link to their website down in the description below. All right, guys, that's it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.